Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It's Nikki Sachs, and she is a wellness coach, and she is also here on her birthday. So everyone remember to put happy birthday in the comment box. And she is here today because she wants to talk about different ways to help relationships, and she's going to go into different, uh, different behavioral therapies, and it's really interesting. So hang on to your seats because you're going to be blown away when you hear about what she has to tell you. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey in March, and they want you to be there too. They're going to be a, over a hundred ex, uh, ex exhibitors there, and we're going to have a lot of things there. They'll have speakers and different doctors and coaches there and different natural products that they'll be giving away. So go into the description box and get a little information. And if you want to be an exhibitor, give them a call. So Nikki, I'm so excited to have you back on the show, and it's wonderful to have you as one of our podcasters. She has her own podcast show on, on The Advisor, and she is part of our team. So it's an honor to have you out back on the show and to share all your wonderful advice. So tell everybody just Thank a little you. briefly what you do, and just uh, I can't wait to hear this because this is so exciting. Thank you. Thanks for having me here and uh, thank you for the wishes on my birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't like to celebrate a lot of them, but thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so, so I, uh, yes, I'm a wellness coach. I kind of um, spent a lot of my life in the wellness world and fitness and health. So I went about um, becoming a wellness coach, which included a lot of um fitness kind of exercise, kind of PT stuff, a lot of dietetics. So on a dietary advisory point of view, uh, and then I went into coaching as well and life coaching. Um, and the reason this all happened to me was because, um, you know, obviously being a health crazy, uh, but I really wanted to help people. And how it turned out was that I started seeing people in order to help with their weight issues or their, you know, or, or to, to de-stress. And what I found was that a lot of people were carrying stuff. They were carrying weight or they were carrying things based on their mental well-being. Um, it's tied and linked very, very closely, in my opinion. And, you know, the one thing that really got me was people's interpersonal relationships, how they related to each other, how they related to, you know, their peers and friends and family. Um, so I actually then uh, correlated a bunch of information and I decided to put a book together based on my experience in a way of helping other people recover from any mental illness. Um, so I have published a book called Hiding in the Open, which you know, it is about living sensitively. Um, and it basically, from my experiences as a wellness coach, I decided to put myself out there to show people that everybody has a story. Everybody has an opportunity to recover. Everybody has the ability to recover. Uh, and it really is learning techniques and understanding more about what it is that is making you unwell. Yes. So my book is is really touches on my life, uh, how I see things and and how I find myself in recovery from a mental illness, namely borderline personality disorder, which we spoke about in the first podcast. Yes. You know, I, I feel like it's so important to discuss these issues because I feel like myself, um, stress could really destroy somebody. People don't really, really realize how strong stress could be on the body and how much damage could actually do. You know, mentally, when we're not all there and we're going through a lot of stress in our lives, it basically, it breaks down the walls of the immune system. It's like opening the doors and asking every il possible illness to come in. And, you know, they even say it's a known uh, scientific fact that over 70% of illness is caused by stress. And, you know, go ahead. Yeah, no, everything is, um, you know, your environment is so dictated by how you show up to a large extent. And what the environment is, is how people react to you, how you manage your daily de life, um, how, what foods you drink, your behaviors. And stress is so much um, a, a main uh, 
contributing factor to how everybody relates to you, how you relate to the world. And it definitely has an impact on your health on a number of levels. And as you say, one of the most vital things to understand is the impact it has on your immune system. Your immune system is very sensitive to, to trauma, to uh, you know, to things, that, the experiences that you have, and also how you manage your life, you know, how you how you manage your sleep and how everything, yeah. You know, even you mentioned, you know, gaining weight, we, you know, when we're, we're under stress, our cortisol level goes up, you know, it, Absolutely. It, it's like, uh, people don't really realize the the amount of stress that we go through on a day to day basis. Um, is you know is unreal because it's it's almost impossible not to go through life without any stress so you know what type of therapies you know you had mentioned that there are different therapies to help with your your relationships to help with weight loss to help with coping with life maybe you can get more deeper into that because i think especially two people have a you know when life is is at we're overcoming obstacles in our life. Sometimes it affects our relationships pretty much all the time. And it's very hard. And And some people have difficulty in, in relationships um, just because of past traumas that went on in their life. So I think it's really beneficial maybe to discuss about relationships because you know a lot of people have a lot of walls up and a lot of people have a problem with getting closer to people. And a lot of people have a problems with communicating um, uh, just how they feel with one another. And it all stems back to something that probably happened in in their past, their root cause. 100% correct. And it's a, I mean, it's a good, it's a good question. And, um, you know, trauma, I do, in my book, I state that I don't think anybody is spared from trauma and grief and loss. And mm -hmm. it's not necessarily losing somebody you love. Loss encompasses a, a, a multitude of things. Yes. Um, you know, losing your, your children when they leave home or aging or, um, you know, not not uh, getting the promotion or whatever. So the, the loss and, and traumas that can happen in one's life has um, an impact on, on every relationship that they have. Yeah. Um, I, I find that there's a, you know, there's a certainly a strategy that has worked for me. And I have to highlight again that I'm, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, a psychiatrist. Um, I'm just somebody who has life experiences in certain things that can hopefully bring about change. Yes. So one of the, one of the strategies um, that I have found, so there's the, you know, I, I mentioned it in the book that there's certain things that I need to do on a daily basis in order to cope. Mm -hmm. And I've identified what those are through the experiences that I've had. So the biggest problem for me was relationships, whether they be romantic or otherwise, I found that my showing up with people in relationship was flawed. And I don't mean flawed in a, it's not a negative. I just found that I could be doing it better. Yes. So so the so it I, you know I state that the first thing that you have to do um, is make sure that you're okay. Um, so that's taking all the experiences, your trauma, any grief, any loss, and learning how you can manage your emotions. Yeah. Because managing your emotions is the first point of call when it comes to actually dealing with obviously people. Right. Um, and trauma, as you said, does have a profound impact. And now trauma can be, um, you know, again, it can be abuse. It can be neglect. Uh, it can be from anything that um, makes you feel threatened uh, in your life, uh, your safety or harmful. You know, it's, it could be harmful to you. So having said that, you know, there are a lot of practices. Um, a cognitive, beha cognitive behavioral therapy is is one of the practices that a lot of psychotherapists use yes. in order to manage, um, you know, life experiences. The one thing that I found incredibly beneficial was something called dialectal behavioral therapy, which in short, an acronym is DBT. So I realized that part of my process for recovery was I needed to learn the skills of DBT and I'll go into that in more detail, mm -hmm. but I needed to make sure that I was getting enough sleep. And that for me meant seven to eight hours of sleep a night. 
Right. I needed to make sure that I was connecting with nature. Mm -hmm. Um, I needed to make sure. So this is all just a reminder to make myself a better person and to make myself ready to learn skills in order to be able to respond better to people. Right. So it was, it was, um, you know, doing things that, that, that helped like, eating healthy, avoiding alcohol, we were talking about when possible. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's about having or detoxifying from people that do not benefit you in your life yes. and to things that don't ma- add value. So to take yourself out of situations that are negative um, and being able to, to manage um, situations like work peers and things like that. So, so then going to the DBT, there's four aspects of DBT. So it is a it is kind of, they say, the third wave of, of therapies that one can use in order to, um, you know, to recover from any mental illness or, or disharmony. Um, so the, four, the two aspects to it, uh, and it's a mindfulness-based practice that was created by a doctor in the 70s named uh, Dr. Linham. And it's, it's mindfully based. Uh, there's, there's four points to it. There's mindfulness, there's uh, emotion re- emotional regulation, interpersonal relationships, and distress tolerance. And it's all about acceptance and change. Right. Um, so that's a lot of information that I've, I've just given you. But um, it really is, a, you know, what it's, I've found that it's done for me. So firstly, the mindfulness practice is about accepting your present moment. It's about understanding that you are where you are in the moment. Because a lot of us with the stress are thinking about what's going to happen or living in what has happened. Yes. And we never, you know, we find it, it's not likely that to, to, to manage the way that you respond to people, Mm -hmm. you are not living in the present. Yes. So I say that if you're looking forward, you suffer from anxiety because you don't know how to manage that. And if you go back, you suffer from possibly depression or yeah. frustration or feelings of failure. So the mindfulness is the one aspect to it. Distress tolerance is finding ways to better manage your emotions so that you can, um, so that you can learn a, a systems to, to, to break down your distress. Right. Emotional regulation is also that it's uh, regulating your emotional um, language uh, and and territory, so that you can have the conversations that you need to do in order to to better understand people. Then, obviously, interpersonal relationships is is being assertive enough, having boundaries, putting things in place, so that you can have healthy relationships with people. Right. So this it sounds like a lot, but it's actually simple techniques that you can learn in order to 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 be you know to to benefit your relationships. That sounds. That was a lot of info. (laughs) (laughs) I love what you said, though. About (laughs) no, it was good info. It was really good. I love what you said about the past. How people, if they focus on the past, they tend to get depressed, and which is true because we can't change the past, but we tend to focus on the negative things that occurred in our past. It seems like a lot of times we don't think about the good things that happened. We always things that that happened in the past that bothered us or traumatized us. Those are the things that stick in our heads. And then if you're focusing on what could happen, you're going to be full of anxiety. So then how do you focus? You you focus on people, you try to focus on the now, but you're, you're very anxious. And so you can't have really good communication with somebody. And it's so true because I, I know so many people like that. They either live in the past or they live, you know, worrying about the future or they do you, a lot of times I see them doing both. And then they're a wreck in the present, you know, and it's, it's hard for them to really focus and really make the right choices in life because they're so wound up because they're either in the past or the present. And, you know, how, how do you get through that? Well, I, you know, at the risk of um, a, a contentious issue for me on all of this is social media. We live in a world where everything is instant. Yes. Um, everything that we do is expected to be done immediately. Yes. Everything we want, we want now. Um, you know, we look back at our past with judgment based on what we think our life needs to look like. Yeah. We look forward with um, with feelings of uh, of of 
in, in, uh, of not being able to achieve what we are expected not so much about society even, but by ourselves. Yeah. And it causes massive amounts of anxiety because um, there's no ways that you know how you're going to be in the future, but you un- but you think you know how you want to be. Yes. So you put there's a lot of pressure that one puts on themselves. And and I firmly believe that, you know, social media to a large extent is responsible for that. And I think we may have brought this up in the in our chat previously. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that's one of my things that I have to limit myself on. I decided yeah. to go off Facebook years ago um, and Instagram. So if, if anybody's following me, um, you, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, there's very, I, I find that, um, you know, I post for my, for my business and that, but otherwise I find it very distressing. Yeah. Not so much because, um, you know, I don't have a great life, but because I see what people's expectations of themselves are yeah. and and I just it's a lot of the time a cry for help yeah. a lot of the time it's unfulfilled needs mm-hmm. unfulfilled expectations and then as you say a lot of rumination of the past yeah so a lot of people um you know get anxiety as well from thinking oh my gosh how could I have done that differently and what do people think of me mm-hmm. and um you know what how can I ex- change in the future and I have to try harder mm-hmm. and I have to be better I have to be thinner, prettier, wiser, you know, and the pressure is so enormous Yeah. Um, that, you know, that's where the stress comes from to a large extent. So separate the relational stress right. um, and the work stress and just living in is, is stressful. Just yeah. actually being in your own head is stressful. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that in itself is, is, um, is just a minefield. So, you know, how do you get out of that? Well, again, you limit your interface with things that are negative and you have to find techniques. Oh, I just got worked up and quite a yeah. uh, You have to find techniques that are gr- grounding yes. for you in the present. So just talking right now, you know, all of that, that energy around all that stuff, I have to actually just stay focused on being present with you. Yeah. And and that takes it takes breathing. It takes conscious work. I always joke that living consciously can be exhausting. Yeah. Because you have to keep reminding yourself, hang on, that is a narrative I don't want to have. Right. If I play this, you know, you say to yourself, if I had to play this movie forward, what will the outcome be? Yeah. How will that look? Mm-hmm. Um, You know, if I had to go down this path of thought or action, how is that going to benefit me Mm -hmm. or people that, you know, I engage with? Right. So it really is about stopping yourself. Yes. Pausing and thinking about. So, you know, the acronym I use is SOS, which is stop, observe, and then see which way to go forward. Yeah. So it's, you know, it is, and that's simple because I mean, in a panic situation or in a, in a, in a situation where you feel out of control, just SOS, stop, observe what is happening physically in your body and around you, and then see which way to proceed and to, to go forward, managing your emotions and that sort of thing. I think once you just take a pause and some breaths, it really does in observing what's happening to you physically. Yeah, you know, if you're in a situation where you feel that, you know, you you anx- anxious or whatever, your heart rate increases, yeah. your stress increases, um, you know, and everything happens. Your pupils dilate. Your it's uh, it's amazing if you just listen to what's happening in your body. Right, what happens? Very and true. the conversations we have with ourselves, the words that we use, mm-hmm. you know, changing that language can go a long way. Oh, for yeah. for getting present and and kind of just being kind on yourself, and these are strategies. These are things that people hear a lot, right. but I think if you if you know if you learn just techniques to empower yourself uh, on how to manage a present moment right. um, can help a lot. 
Oh, I agree so much. The, you know, a lot of times what I'd like to do is I, I take, I'd use the chakra bowls, like the singing bowls. Mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I would just sit on the floor and the, each of them have different vibrations and they're known mm -hmm. to, to signify different parts of the body. And I would just close my eyes. I would slow down my breathing. I would clear my mind and then just focus on those vibrational sounds and just take it in and just tr observe what it's making me feel like where in the part of the body it's making me feel, you know, where, where am I feeling it? How is it making me feel? And just breathing in slow and breathing out. And wow, you know, afterwards I, it made me feel so calm and I, I feel so more focused when I, when I do things like that. It's amazing when you do stop and you observe and then you, and you can do something in between maybe to relax you you know, then you start to see things in a completely different light. It puts you in a totally different manner, it seems. The, those uh, the singing, the t Tibetan singing bowls mm -hmm. are a phenomenal way to ground yourself. Often if you do yoga, you know, people will use them or a gong or something. And it, it really does resonate. And you're absolutely right on a whole number of levels in your in your vibration. So having access to something like that is wonderful. And taking time out, you know, with mindfulness, it's not a, a, a meditation. It's not a sitting down and trying to get comfortable and arming and that sort of thing. It is right. being present. So in your with, when you're using your singing bowls, it's about being present to the sound and the vibration. Mm -hmm. uh, one can, you know, do things mindfully just sitting in their chair at work. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You can stop, you can breathe, you can focus on the sound. So there are techniques, you know, so things you can hear, things you can see, things you can smell, things you can touch. Yes. So if you just do things like that, it will ground you in the moment. Yeah. So if you just say, what can I hear? Name two things you can hear, two things you can feel, two things you can, you know, taste. And when you say taste, have a sip of water, eat a mint, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that can really grind, ground you. I keep wanting to say grind, ground <laughs> you into, <laughs> it's a grind, it can <laughs> ground you into your present moment. Yeah. And I think just knowing that, you know, so part of the SOS is if you stop, yes. you observe what's happening, you observe your surroundings, observe what you can hear, observe what you can feel. Those kind of things really do touch. Um, it's kind of like your limbic system and it, it, yeah. it kind of on a, a, you know, a neurological kind of basis, yeah. it does really settle you. And, you know, I think it, it took me a while to really learn how not to live in the pre in the past and how, how not to worry so much about the future and just live in the now, because that's what I do now. I just focus on the present and what a difference it makes. But it's hard because people have, we have habits that we have to break. Mm -hmm. And it's, sometimes it's not very, it's not easy when you're so used to live in a certain way. And then you have to break those old habits. But, you know, what do you suggest for people? Because, you know, sometimes... Every little thing we do that we do consistently on a on a, a regular basis becomes a habit forming. And then, you know, even the simplest thing like getting up in the morning, having a cup of coffee or getting a cup of tea, we're used to that. So then, you know, you tell someone don't do that for the next three days. I guarantee you they're going to struggle with it because it's become a habit. So what's your advice for people who want to live in the present and they want to focus on now, you know, how do they break their, their old habits that what they're doing currently might not be so healthy for them. So yeah, I suggest firstly is finding out what is important to you. Mm -hmm. So you identify for what your values are, right? So you, so you identify what's important in your life and you make a conscious decision to do whatever you need to do in order to change. And that means conscious. So if you are finding that your romantic relationships are just, just taking it out of you and you cannot cope with them anymore, or you cannot cope with them, you have to change things. So right. first you have to understand what you value and you value yourself first and foremost. Yes. And then you find out how you live your values every day. You live, you know, my values are myself obviously I've come to value myself enormously right. um, and kindness and courage and I live those so I find that's important to me 
Mm-hmm. And the most exciting thing is that there is something called neuroplasticity, and I'm not going to touch on what that is, mm-hmm. but it basically, in simple terms, means that as human beings, we are able to change the neural pathways of our brains yes. by doing something in a different way. So what a neural pathway is, and you know this, mm-hmm. um, is just for those that don't, is it is like a well-worn path in your brain where the neurons, your nerves uh, tend to go. Right. So it's, for instance, like a normal path that you would walk down through a grassy area. You would go down that. And it's just autopilot. Your brain tends to do that. Yes. We as human beings, with all the knowledge and the wisdom and the miraculousness of our being, yeah. have the possibility and the ability to change the way that we think. So if you understand that you are valuable and you need to change what you are doing in order to live a better life, you can do that. And yes. it's a simple process of repetition. So you're 100% correct. So if you get out of bed on the left-hand side and you know that when you do that every morning, you're going to stub your toe on the bedside table, <laughs> then you need to make sure that you start changing and getting out of bed on the right. And it's going to feel uncomfortable. And the days when you're not going to be able to do it because it's just autopilot, but then you stop and you think, hang on a second, before I stub my toe, let me get out of bed tomorrow on the next, on the, right. the opposite side. So it is about making those conscious changes every day because you value yourself as a person and you want to change. Right. Sorry, there's something happening here. <laughs> and that was, sorry, it's... I don't know what's happened. It's somebody calling me for my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always interesting. Sorry that it happens because if I've got WhatsApp on my computer as well. Apologies for that. Um, but yes, it is valuing yourself and understanding that um, you need to make a conscious effort. And it guarantee over a period of time, yes. things will change. Not immediately, but it'll change because we have the brain capacity and the ability to do that. Yes. And I, I, you know, it just takes time. And like, like you mentioned earlier, people want things want, you know, fast, 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 but in real life, nothing happens fast. It just, it takes time and effort, you know, it takes effort. It really, it does. And the, you know, I, um, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder about seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was on the edge of everything. I was, uh, my relationship, I was just coming out of the worst relationship ever. Right. Uh, for the, I don't know how many of the time I've had those kind of relationships with narcissistic people. I was uh, really suicidal, really. Um, and I found somebody who helped me do dialectal behavioral therapy. And the word dialectal means the... Um, um, the acceptance of opposites and, and change. So yeah. it actually means that you can accept the fact that there's black and white and that right. you can, um, and you and something can happen that you're not happy with it, but the reality is it's happened. Yes. So I started this process of healing and, and my counselor said to me at the time that if he could promise me that if I dedicated myself to doing this every day for a year, I could live a life that I couldn't imagine worth living. And I thought I have nothing to lose and I have everything to gain. So I set about doing this change process, this mindfulness practice, this daily sense of stopping myself and, and, and accepting what is currently happening, happening in my world. Um, and, and it changed my life so substantially that I decided to write a book about it because wow. we were doing this, we were doing, I was doing this with people that I was coaching. Um, I was then, it was showing up for me, you know, once I got a handle on it, um, s- seeing the changes in people um, made a huge impact uh, on their lives and mine. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a possible, it's, you know, change recovery uh, is, imp- is possible and, I just find being empowered, knowing that you can actually make that change in your life yeah. is just the best thing in the world. And that's hard, you know, like maybe you could explain to people because I find it really hard when, you know, there have been narcissistic people in my life and there have been people that are complete opposites and it's very hard to, to get along or even live with somebody when they are either ha- have a narcissistic disorder or they're completely opposite. You know, they say opposites attract and they do, 
to a point, but you do have similar, you know, traits, you know, and that's what keeps you bonded is one may be an alpha, one's a, a beta, you know, one has strengths here, one has weaknesses here. But when you have someone that's completely opposite of you, and then you have, or it has narcissistic behaviors, that's very difficult. That is very difficult. It's a very interesting. And you see me smiling because I have had tons of experience with narcissists. And because the other thing I highlight in my book is about living sensitively. So I cover a number of different, um, I wouldn't call them conditions, all of them, but things that can create sensitive living. Yeah. So I'm also a codependent person. Mm -hmm. So codependent people live to uh, sensitively, but to, to win favor with people. So they make themselves incredibly vulnerable. Right. And being vulnerable means that you attract people that are predatory mm -hmm. because they are wanting what you give. So they know that you need certain things. You need to be love bombed. You need to be treated like a princess. You need to be, because you're vulnerable and you're showing mm -hmm. up like you are weak. Right. So they tend to then take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that, you know, there's a narcissistic, uh, dis, um, a personality disorder and there's narcissistic traits so some people aren't as bad oh, as others okay. but they yeah so there is actually personality disorder uh, of narcissism and that is can be overt or covert but you know you know when you are in a relationship with somebody where the the red flags are everywhere and and you're feeling it but the most interesting thing and this goes back to where I say valuing yourself yeah. is that we think that we don't listen to ourselves and our internal compass where it's saying run you know <laughs> we think the sky is showing us everything that we need to, to and love yeah and that's why when you say you know opposites attract so we're so conditioned to the excitement the um the love, the the crazy, the instant, the yeah. spot, you know, all that stuff that is feeding us on one level, although we know it's not good for us. Yeah. Enter somebody in our lives that is giving us what we actually need, validating you, um, showing you uh, you know, compassion, uh to take, you know, showing you we look at that as being them being boring. You know, they always say that the nice guy comes off second because yeah. we're so used to this crazy uh, energy, um, you know, that yeah. just like just talking about it, you know, it's, right. but if somebody who's calm comes into your life, who is, uh, as I say, you know, gives you what you honestly need, your body is so conditioned to wanting the opposite mm -hmm. that it just doesn't, it just, it, it seems to not fit. And the most interesting thing is that, and I hear it so often, is that the more you value yourself, the more you appreciate who you are, the more work you do on yourself, the more recovery you do, the less the narcissist he seems to be attractive to you. Yeah. And that is a real thing. It's a real thing. The minute yeah. you change as a person, and you know this from all the way, the minute you change as a person, the right people start showing up yes. in your world. It mm -hmm. just happens. It's all about energy. Everything is about energy. Yes. What you put out, you get back. Yeah. So if you do that, if you if you smile, somebody reciprocates. They probably right. think if you're walking down the street and you <laughs> smile, you're completely cuckoo. But it is, <laughs> and it's all energy. Everything yeah. is energy based. Yeah. You know, and this I can talk about for hours because I, right. if if you are showing up in a certain way, the the universe is going to give that straight back to you. Yes. So if you love yourself, if you care for your wellness, if you want to show up and be a different person, you your the universe is conspiring to make sure that you're happy and well. Yeah. We get in our own way. It's so true. I you know, I I explain that to people and many times people don't get it because they don't see it. But the whole world is run by energy. If we didn't have energy, Absolutely. me and you wouldn't be here, you know, and that's how powerful Absolutely. energy is. And whatever you do put out into the universe, you do get back, you know, but a lot Definitely. of people who can't see it, they can't come out of that little gray box because visually they don't see the energy, but then you try to explain, well, we wouldn't be here if there was no energy. And still it's like, they refuse to succumb to that belief because they still can't see it, you know? 
you know, a lot of people are, um, are they have to see something in order to believe it. And, you know, it's difficult to believe it and then see it. And there's a lot of gurus that, you know, Mike Dooley and Wayne Dyer and Abraham, there's a lot of people that are the believers before you see it. Yeah. Because they say the internal change. And, you know, just an example, for instance, of energy was if I had to wake up in the morning and say to myself, oh, damn, here we go. Another day. It's Groundhog Day. I just (laughs) haven't got the energy to get out of bed. I'm just not, you know. As uh-huh. opposed to saying, as opposed to saying, okay, so today I don't know what lies ahead, right? But I'm not going to let it be the same as it always is. I'm going to keep moving forward. Yes, I'm going to have different experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that I engage with, I'm not going to let affect me, and I'm really going to make an effort today to make it different. Yeah, that energy is immediately different from the energy I spoke of about Groundhog Day. Yes. So it's, and you can feel it. So that is, that is just, it's not a tangible uh, 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 evidence of what energy is, but yeah. it's a, it's a verbal psychological way that you can feel energy. You know, it's called upstream or downstream. Yeah. You know, you either swim upstream and the energy is hard and painful, mm-hmm. or you go downstream with the current and it's just a lot simpler and a lot more and a lot more peaceful and kind and gentle. Yeah. yeah. When you said that, I felt different. When you worded it different yeah. like that, it made yeah. me feel different. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's the example I give. Um, it's it's not something you see, but it's something you definitely feel. Yeah. Um, you know, in in the words that you use. Right. You know. Um, so and I just keep saying, keep moving forward every single day. You know, you may not want to, and it may be difficult, but just put one foot in front of the other, and know that a different experience may come. Somebody you could have a different interaction. You yeah. could see something wonderful. It just keep moving forward. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's so true. Now, if, if you had it to take everything that we discussed today and you had it to give a, the, the listeners a couple of things to focus on, a couple of turning points to emphasize on, what would you want them to really focus on, you know, that from, from our discussion today? I think, you know, there's so much I could say, but I think that what is important, firstly, is to be okay with you being Okay, so what I say that I mean is accept that you are like like everybody and and that is you can go through stuff, you need to validate your own experiences right then you need to make a conscious decision on how you want to live your life yeah. and understand that you have the power to change it mm-hmm. and then I would recommend finding skills. To empower yourself, you know, a lot of the time therapy and support is not available from a cost point of view, or whatever, but you can read about ways of improving yes. your life. Very true. Um, you know, I, I'm, I mentioned DBT, dialectal behavioral therapy, mm-hmm. which is mindfulness practice um, and, and said about empowering yourself on your well-being. Right. And also, you know, there's a chap that I, I quote, quote a lot of, and that's Don Miguel Ruiz. Right. And he had the four agreements. But the one that is so important, I think, for me, well, there's there's four, but is to not take anything too personally. Right. So I think, you know, um, if you just get that right uh, and understand that, you know, it's the world is not happening to you. Yes. The world is the world and you need to take control of how you show up in the world. And I, I think even for me that it took me a while to realize that because I usually say because I'm a Pisces, I'm so sensitive, but I was, I would take a lot of things personally. And then it took me, it took me many years and I realized it's not me with the issue. It's the person saying it or doing it is the person that has the issue. And I had to. It's a reflection. Yeah, it's deflection. So you're a Pisces too. Mm-hmm. Your birthday is is soon. March seventh. Yeah. Okay. So we're um, both Pisces. But, mm-hmm. Absolutely, and definitely, water signs are sensitive. But it's embracing that and saying, you know, I'm a sensitive person, and that comes with compassion 
It comes with kindness. It comes with empathy. It comes with so many good things. And accepting that and saying, how can I use that as a strength? Right. As opposed to being being sensitive. And, you know, we look at water signs or Pisces as being people who say, oh, you're so emotional. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> yes, I know how to love. And yes, I know how to care and whatever. But the emotion is also empathy. And yeah. that's a massive strength in my in my opinion. Oh, and definitely. compassion. So, yeah, you know, um, sensitivity, which I mentioned in my book, can be a huge strength as well. Yes. I think, you know, that that was one of the things that I, I always talked about myself. It was that after going through so many things in my life, I developed a strong sense of empathy. I always had it, but I really developed later on in my years. And I would by going through things in life, I was able to look through my the, my own eyes differently, look at other people differently, you know, through empathy and to understand what they were going through and not to be judgmental but to understand you know, and put myself in their shoes or to, to move back and say, well, if, if I went through their life, you know, how would I feel? And then have empathy and have that compassion for them. And that, I think, boy, that changes you as a person. I think you're a hundred percent correct. I think that, um, you know, and you hit a word that, that triggers me a bit, which is judgment. Um, and only because, and, and again, going back to that SOS, yeah. you know, sometimes when, uh, people are responding in a way, and as you said, um, and they actually, they, they react to you. That is them. That is their stuff. So yeah. to say to yourself, observe what's going on. So you stop and you go, hang on. That person is saying that stuff because they're feeling it yeah. or they're thinking it. And yeah. I don't want to be part of this judgment process. Yeah. So you, know, you just see which way to turn. And, right. and that, yeah, you know, judgment is definitely about uh, the other person. So to not take things personally is a massive, massive like gift that you can give yourself. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And is there anything else that you'd like to share? Any other takeaways that you can think of that you feel? I, you know, I, like you have, um, have had an interesting life. I have um, been through things. Um, not more or less, but I've been through things. Right. Uh, and I share my story because I want people to understand um, that your life, I think everyone's got a book in them, but your mm-hmm. life is is not too dissimilar from other people's in that right. we all suffer things together. Yes. So um, if I can, uh, my book is uh, is called Hiding in the Open by Nikki Sachs, it's living sensitively. It covers a lot of things about my life, about my uh, diagnosis. Um, it is available on Amazon and Kindle. And uh, I just hope like you, being a compassionate Pisces, that we can go about helping people in the world because that's part of what we're, we're sent here to do. Yes, I agree. I agree totally. Now, do you do any services? You said you coach and you do wellness coach. And if someone wanted to contact you, I assume you do things by Zoom also. Absolutely. Absolutely. And most of my coaching is by Zoom. Um, I have a website, which is Nikki Sachs, N-I-K-I-S-A-K-S dot com. And people can reach out to me anytime in there and we can start a conversation. That's excellent. And is there anything else that you'd like the audience to know before we close up? I just want to say that uh, I believe that every single one of us is a miracle. The mere fact that we, the mere fact that our parents and their parents from all over the world found each other and created us in a moment is a miracle. And I think we need to celebrate that. I agree also. And I wish you a happy birthday because today is your day to celebrate. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much and so nice to see you again thank yes. you for the wishes oh you're very welcome it's so nice to see you too and i can't wait till we have our next conversation everybody this is nikki Sachs. So don't forget her thank her you. book is on amazon and it's on kindle also available and i can't wait to see you soon thank you so much for being on the show thank you you have Blessings. a great have a day. day thank you thank you bye 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 <laughs>